a few minutes ago, uh, I was a photographer, and now suddenly I'm chairing this session. It's actually a privilege. Uh, in this session, we are going to look at the institutional framework uh, for setting, uh, increasing, and enforcing uh, the national minimum wage. Uh, under this section, I've, we, are, we are specifically going to look at two main things, right? Which are uh, the structures which are responsible for setting the national minimum wage, as well as uh, the question of enforcement. And I would like to believe there's been a question that has been raised earlier on by the gentleman right there at the back about the issue of, uh, on in, uh, enforcement. I think this question is going also to be addressed as the presenters uh, are going to present uh, in, this, in, the, in this session. Allow me to introduce uh, our three presenters. These presenters have been introduced already, but for the sake of some people, maybe you might not be, uh, maybe you missed a few uh, introductory remarks about on them, but I'm not going to do much on profiling uh, these uh, presenters. Our first presenter is going to be Mr. Shan. Uh, Shan uh, is the secretary of the National uh, Wages Consult uh, Consultative Council uh, in the Malaysian uh, Department of Labor. He's going to be our first presenter. And then our second presenter is going to be uh, Ruth. Ruth is also uh, a researcher with the National Minimum Wage uh, Research Initiative. Uh, and then finally, we are going to have our last presentation from Ben, who is uh, a researcher at the Development Policy Research Unit. Uh, I welcome Mr. Shan uh, to the stage. Uh, thank you. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, seeing you again, but the crowd is getting less. Anyway, uh, but before I, I proceed with the presentation, I just want to make um, uh, one, one comment about the tax incentives. Um, I, I'm not going to get into the debate of uh, whether uh, we should give tax incentives to, to ensure compliance by employers. But Malaysia actually did that. And, and we did that for the small and medium enterprises for one year in, in 2014. We started to implement in 2013, so we, we, we received a lot of applications from the SME associations, and they were uh, forwarded to the government, and we deliberated, and um, we gave them tax exemption uh, for additional expenses incurred uh, by paying minimum wages. Say, for example, they used to pay a wage, wage range, say, 100,000 ringgit for that particular year, so due to minimum wage compliance, they had to pay 200,000 because of the raise. So for the additional, we gave them the tax incentive. It's only for one year. They requested for another one year in 2015, and the government said no. And, and the reason being that uh, we wanted to ensure SMEs, SMEs are able to pay the minimum wage uh, initially so that um, uh, I, I think, I think we, we tend to um, um, believe that um, no matter what, we have to try our best to ensure compliance. And one way of it is to, to, to ensure the SMEs. The MNCs, we said no. MNCs, no. So uh, I, I believe uh, Machiavelli said this, that uh, the end justifies the means. So um, I'm not sure whether it was Machiavelli or, or whoever it was, but uh, we wanted to ensure minimum wage is a successful policy. So that, that, that um, I'll come to the presentation. Now this is going to be the uh, uh, outline of presentation, and, and I think I can skip that. Now uh, our structure is, uh, is the framework of minimum wage in Malaysia is a bit uh, complicated. I'm not sure whether I should touch all of it, but um, we, we have this committee that is known as the Facilitating Committee chaired by the Chief Secretary to the government. Uh, he looks at all the government um, issues raised against the government by, by virtue of needing to comply with the minimum wage. So we have representative from the Ministry of Human Resources, the Secretary General, the uh, Ministry of Human Resources, Ministry of International Trade, Economic Planning Unit, and few others. 
and including the Labor Department. So they reports to the cabinet. That committee right at the top there reports to the cabinet. They have got nothing to do with the NWCC. So NWCC, uh, we have this minimum wage technical committee. That, that is the backbone of the NWCC. And, and I'll be tell, uh, explaining later who, who, is, who sits in the technical committee. And the selection of the minimum wages technical committee members are done by the selection committee, which is also a committee formed under the NWCC. And the selection committee comprises members of the NWCC, namely the employer, the worker, the government. W the, the reason being that uh, we, we wanted to make sure that those in the technical committee are endorsed by the NWCC, namely the three main groups in the uh, uh, NWCC. And of course, we had the deferment committee. I've explained that just now, so I'm not going to touch that now. It's already been redundant. It was also a tripartite committee when we process applications for deferments by the employers. And uh, drafting committee, I think uh, it's drafting of the new minimum wage order. We had some issues, so we formed a small committee. Also a tripartite committee, uh, chaired by the deputy uh, NWCC chairman. And uh, we have lastly one, uh, another committee also chaired by the NWCC uh, chairman, deputy chairman, uh, to look into all issues of implementation and monitoring. Uh, you see, when we implemented the minimum wage in 2012, we had uh, a lot of concerns raised by micro employers, employers with uh, PWDs, disability workers, and a and, and, um, few others, as I mentioned this morning. So we br brought all these issues to this last, the, the last committee here. They deliberate. It's also a tripartite committee. So uh, we deliberate and we, we try to trash out how best to, to, to address those concerns. And we will table it to the NWCC and subsequently we will take it up to the cabinet. So that's the general overview of uh, how the minimum wage is, is working in our country. Now, um, it's, it's done by an act of parliament. And, and when, when we uh, implemented minimum wage, we didn't talk about the rate first. I, I'm not sure, uh, I think you're adopting a different methodology here. What we did was, we, we got the cabinet to agree on the uh, rationale to have a minimum wage policy. So we created an act, we took it to the parliament, and we identified areas that we need to get approval from the parliament. Basically, the act has two main sections, the formation of the NWCC, and secondly, the enforcement part. We didn't ask the parliament for a rate. So it was never debated uh, at an early stage what should be the minimum wage rate. When the act was already been gazetted, the NWCC was given the task to determine the minimum wage rate that should be brought forward to the cabinet. So the debate on the rate of minimum wage came subsequently, not at the initial stage. So we got the act passed by the parliament first. And, and, and the order is made by the minister upon the direction of the cabinet. And the minister in our act has very minimal role because we, upon agreement by both parties, the employers and the workers group, they decided that the minister should not be given too much powers. So it has to be more on the NWCC. And um, enforcement is there. It's clearly explained what are the powers of the enforcement officers under the act. Now, a copy of the Act is available in our portal, Minimum Wage Portal. Uh, I'll give you the address later on. Now, these are the functions of the uh, Council, namely to advise the government on the minimum wage, make recommendations to the government on the rate, non-coverage, coverage, and etc. And, and lastly, review the minimum wage order. Now, uh, this is the structure of the NWCC. We have the Chairman, Deputy Chairman. Chairman is a chairman and deputy chairman is, is prescribed in the act to be an independent person. So they are not supposed to be any uh, government, I mean, employer or workers uh, interest. So they are, at the moment, the chairman is a former federal court judge. Uh, so the deputy chairman is uh, a, an independent person and I'm their secretary. 
And we have these four main groups there. Public officers, we have five. Uh, Ministry of Finance, Department of uh, Public Service, Ministry of International Trade, Ministry of Human Resources, and and we have equal number of employers and workers group. Uh, that is prescribed under the Act. Uh, if we have six employer, we have to have six workers. So that is prescribed under the Act. And we have five independent uh, groups here, mainly to create a balance between, between the, these two groups, especially the employers and the workers group. Now, uh, all members are appointed by the minister and uh, equal representative from workers and employers at, at all time. And chairman, deputy chairman are not public officers, not employers, not trade union member. So in a sense, we want them to be a neutral person when they are chairing the meetings. And, and secretary, that is me, public officer. And um, the total NWCC members shall not exceed 25, 29 persons. So at the moment, we have 25. Currently, we have 25. And uh, the secretary's role is outlined clearly in the, in the Act. And uh, the term is not exceeding three years, but it can be renewed. Recently, we renewed them for another two years. And uh, there's provision for revocation of membership by the minister, and there's a provision for resignation. Now, vacation of office, uh, if, for example, the member of uh, council passed away. And there is a requirement to have minimum of four meetings a year. Uh, it is prescribed under the Act, and there is a requirement to give 14 days notice for each meeting. So I think these are all uh, administrative arrangements that we have. And uh, minutes of meeting, NWCC meetings are admissible in court, so it is prescribed in the Act, NWCC Act. And uh, we can establish committees, so there are so many committees that we have. And, um, and the government shall provide sufficient funds to the council to operate, so mainly logistic issues. Now, um, the role of the minister is, is very minimal. His, his role is only to enforcement date of the act, appointment of NWCC members, revoke NWCC membership, and makes the minimum wage order upon the direction of the cabinet and make regulations. Initially, um, uh, when we drafted the Act, uh, we wanted to give more powers to the Minister, and, and that includes to grant exemptions, exclusions. But somehow, uh, the employer group, and surprisingly, the employer group and the workers group did not agree to that. So we dropped that idea. So the Minister's role is very minimal. So um, exclusion, coverage, non-coverage is done by the NWCC on a recommendation by the NWCC to the cabinet. So that's how it works. So the minister does not have any role as far as exclusion, I mean, uh, 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 exemptions is concerned. Now, uh, the selection committee, the role of the selection committee is to scrutinize the CV and recommend uh, appointment of technical committee members to the NWCC. Now, the chairman of the selection committee is the deputy chairman of the NWCC. And um, we have these uh, four groups. Two of them sit in the selection committee. And I'm, I'm there as a secretary to the committee. And the main role of the committee is to ensure that um, the uh, appointment of technical committee members are, uh, are appropriate in the sense that they have the relevant background the relevant knowledge, the relevant uh, qualification, say statistical background and whatnot, economics, whatever it is, uh, to sit in that technical committee to advise the NWCC from the technical point of view. So that is why we want to ensure that all the representative of NWCC approves whoever sits in the technical committee. Two more minutes. All right. Now, um, at the moment, we have uh, technical committee members represented from DOS, MPC, ILMIA, and, and five academicians specialized in economic statistics, econometrics, social, labor, and etc. And uh, this is how we set uh, pro uh, the process, the public cons consultation, deliberation at the technical committee, and technical committee recommends to the council, council deliberates, 
and submits recommendation to the cabinet. Cabinet agree, then the minister makes the order. If the cabinet ag disagree for the first time, then what happens is NWCC is required under the Act to deliberate again. So when they deliberate, the second time around, under number 10 there, the cabinet can decide conclusively. They don't have to go back to the council, second time around. And, and meetings are usually very, very tense. It, it, it sometimes results in one group walking out from the council meetings and we have to sit down and, 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 and uh, encourage, cajole them to come back to the you know, discussion table. So uh, it happens to the employers group and the workers group, not so much to the government group and the uh, independent groups. And um, I think it's understandable, the opposite views are always uh, an issue. And, and there is also a provision and under the Act where the council can invite um, other people to sit in the meetings. So it has been a tradition since the formation of the council. Uh, the Secretary General of the uh, Ministry of Human Resources, the Director General of the Labor Department, and the Director General of the Industrial Relations Department are invited, and in most cases they come. Because we wanted to make sure that uh, whatever that NWCC deliberates, discusses, it goes to the enforcement agencies, because they are supposed to be doing the enforcement of the uh, minimum wage order. And, and that, that is working very well so far. And, and, and I, think, I think this I've shared uh, earlier, I, I, I'll, I'll skip that, the enforcement details and whatnot. And, and initial stage, uh, I think 2012 and 13, we, we were really having loggerheads at the NWCC meetings. Okay, just wrapping up. And, and presently, we are more tolerant. I mean, the employer group, the workers group, they are, they are more tolerant, more understanding. And, and uh, that's a good thing that uh, we really appreciate. Now, there's no more walking out. We sit, we discuss, and if there's no conclusion, we, we take up the recommendation as they are to the cabinet. So, unfortunately, the cabinet will have to make one decision, and, and that's how it is now. Technical committee is very crucial, so we ensure that the technical committee members are, are really competent. And, and the minister, he stays neutral, but as a secretary, I will brief him every week on what's happening in the council. And, and the cabinet are also frequently updated on, on, uh, on any issues of uh, minimum wage, because uh, cabinet is always very concerned on, on the development of minimum wage in, in Malaysia. So there, thank you very much. So that's my email address and, and uh, the minimum wage portal. So feel free to browse through. Thank you very much.